I am the Broken Puppet, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw a neo-traditional fox. It's got a bit of a Japanese flair to it as well, but before we get into that, I just want to start by saying, if you guys like this video, make sure you click subscribe and click the little button bar next to it to get notified when I put more videos. Also, if there's anything else you guys want to learn how to teach, or there's anything you guys struggle with when it comes to art, comment below and let me know and I'll try and make a video for it, okay? So yeah, here we go people, this is how to draw a neo-traditional fox for you. Enjoy. Right people, how to draw a neo-traditional fox. This is a really fun one, I really enjoy doing this. So I'm going to do a large circle. This is just going to basically, basically be the uh, border for it. So the whole area around the outside, the whole image is going to fit inside this thing. So we're going to start with an oval, curved line just cutting through the middle. It's just going to be his face. He's going to be facing to the right, but he's going to be looking back on his body with this. So curving off of that line we've done, you can have these two box shapes, slightly longer towards the inside and slightly at an angle as well. The bottom one's basically a copy of the first one, just smaller. So you get a V shape in the mouth. The eye, we're going to do on the line, it's going to be a little triangle, just like so. Curving around this, we're going to have this big oval around the top, and then this little curve just coming off out the bottom, coming around to the front of the eye. It just creates little flaps around the eyes. Cut a line straight through the oval now. So it just really makes it easier for measuring up. Then we add the ears. So the back ear is going to be a triangle on top, like so. And the front ear that you can see is going to be about two triangles got all connected to each other. Gives a bit of sense of 3Dness to the way kind of faces. Curving off the back of the eye again, we're going to have a big sort of curve, curving off the front bit all the way around to that center line at the back. Now the inside nose part just here, we're going to have a curve going back onto the mouth, a line coming back towards the eye, and this little detail bit at the back of the mouth. Create a little line just inside the mouth going back just to make it feel a little bit more 3D in front. Now the top part of the head there, you can see you've got a line curving back, curves in the center part of the head going back around the eye. Now we're under the chest. Now the chest is going to curve off. You're going to curve from the mouth, around, creating these two loops around, cutting into the body to create a chest piece. And then off of that chest piece, we're going to have an oval shape like so, which is basically going to be his shoulder. And then off of that shoulder, we're going to have a sausage shape, just on the edge, a nice thin line coming off to start building up his arm. Just below the arm, we're going to have a circle. You want a little gap just between this, you know, because you want the hand to feel a little bit disconnected from it. Around the edge, you're going to have four little oval shapes, just for the fingers or toes, and a little curve on just the back to create a little stump on his foot. Create a little curve lines just to connect that, and just as you get to the top of the wrist, just go a little bit higher and curve down into it, just because a nice little detail, a little sense of the wrist kind of curve. The other arm is going to be hidden quite behind him, so you're not going to see too much of it. You're going to have a curved line coming through to a circle. And you have four circles again for the fingers or the toes, and a little circle for the stump. And now we're going to start moving on towards the back of the body. So it's going to create this big oval shape, just come around the back, following that curve around to the front to create back of the, you know, his back part going towards the spinal area. Now this is going to be his thigh. You want to make sure this circle, this oval, is bigger than the shoulder one is. Because the back legs are stronger than the front. And you want to make sure it's a little bit more of an angle as well. Don't need to copy an exact same angle, it just looks weird when it's like that. Create two curved lines just to connect that thigh piece to the body. Now the back leg, very similar to the other ones, so you've got a long oval shape, uh, sorry, a long sausage shape with a circle and then four sort of circles for the toes. The back leg a little bit different because it's a bit of an angle, so you've got a little curve, a little oval shape, just to give the hint of like the extended thigh. The sausage shape going into the circle, going into the toes, again like so, just like the other feet. I like to make the back feet a little bit bigger than the front feet. You know, so slightly bigger toes, slightly bigger than that back heel. The tail I'm going to curve up, just give it a nice big long curve, you know, make sure it's nice and puffy as well, you want it to be really big. And now we're going to have some fine lining, so just rub your lines back out just a little bit and come in with a line work. Now get a nice fine liner, so we're going to create a curved line just on the mouth, going onto the nose, you're going to create a triangle shape and a little loop inside just to create the nostril. Create that curved line back. And if there's any lines that are a bit too straight or just a bit of a simple curve, sometimes we're going to add a little bit of a bend in there just to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more lifelike. So here, come around the ear, where we have that straight line down, rather than going straight, we're going to curve down, create a little wisp and then flick off at the end to create an inside part of the ear. So you can see, it's all starting to build up. You can see where everything's kind of going now, which is really good. Now the inner eye bit that's there, I'm going to go around the edge, create a little slit just through the center of it to create his pupil, which has got a cat eye. And the inside bit, you want a little black just towards the inside part of the eye to create a little hint at the inside. It's a very simple little detail, but very effective. Now the mouse is going to curve off and just flick there. You're not going to go too far back of it, because I said he's looking back. You don't, you don't want to go the whole way, so I feel like the head's kind of cut off. The bit of back there, when they curve off and create little flicks to kind of give a bit of a fur texture. Now just go around the paw here. Now you don't want to go around all the lines to begin with because a few of those are going to do in a little fine detail later on. So leave little gaps in between the toes. Don't go around the center of the circle or the little stump. 
Now onto his shoulder piece. I'm going to curve line there, just cutting in. Don't go the whole way, and curve around the back part just like so. Curve around the bottom part of the arm. And similar to before, we're going to curve around the toes, all the way around, and not do the inside detail just yet, because we want to use that fine liner for that. Now we've got that done, I'm going to start to put up a little bit of fur texture just on the inside part of his chest. You know, you can create a few different directions with this. You haven't got a curve way I do, you know, you can be a bit more creative with it if you want. You know, but yeah, you just want to create a few little flicks just here and there on the edge lines. And it just makes it a little bit more fluffy. The same on the underbelly and the same just across the back. Now the back thigh, because it's quite stretched, I'm not going to have too much fur texture on that. So that's going to be a bit more simple curve just going all the way around. With the back legs, same as the other ones, just going to go around all around the outside and little curves just in between each toe. You know, don't do the extended details, we're going to do that with a final liner. A little flicks on the back leg here, scrape a little bit of fur just off the back. Again, simple curve just around that back uh, bottom thigh piece. And just going around the toes, just like usual, like done on the other legs. So you can see the main bulk of the outline is almost done now. You know, it's really starting to come together. So I'm going to start putting up the tail. Now I want the tail to be very fluffy and very kind of like wispy, so as we curve around I'm going to create quite a few little flicks just coming off to give that texture. So you see that's all the bold outline done now. So now we can start working on little fine line details. So see just around the nose you can see it very faintly, very soft, very thin. Just going around the nose detail, around the curve, just towards the eye. All those little lines with them, I'm just going to go over those and just make it a bit more detailed. Like here around the back of the eye I've got a bunch of little flicks there just to kind of give a little bit of fur texture towards the back. That line just going around the top part of the eye, I've actually done the entire line and just a little flick just curving back. You know, so it feels like that fur is kind of going in that direction. But no, you don't necessarily have to do it for everyone, like here, these lines here, I've just done these as simple curves. You know, I really like to have a mix of both the flicks and the line work. So you see on the back of the mouth there, I've just got that flick bit. And I've made it quite sort of solid, so it looks like a sort of specific sort of bit of fur coming off. You know, so it's got a, a solid curve around the outside. Now around the back there, you've got like a nice sort of like semicircle curve coming around. You know, give it a nice bit of direction, because you, know, you kind of want the fur to feel like it's going somewhere. So use your directions to kind of tell where it's going. I'm going to keep building up little details like this, this little kind of fur texture inside the ear, around the body, around the chest, around the back, around the legs, around the thighs, pretty much everywhere. You know, you can go as much or as little as you want. You know, it's one of those darn designs, you know, similar to like, you know, other kind of animals like this, where you can add as much or as little and it look really good both ways. So I'm going to go for a medium sort of section here. I'm not going to go for too crazy, not too little. So I'm going to sort of try and tell direction without going too nuts. Uh, the teeth here, you're going to have the fangs, a few little ones, just going backwards, little sort of triangular shapes, curving. The tongue's going to be a big loop, curving back, going around, and you get little dots just inside the uh, nostril kind of area, just off the nostril area, to give a hint of where the um, whiskers are going to be. So that's pretty much all the facial detail in there. So now we've got that done, I think I'm going to start extending outwards. So it's getting little lines just around the paws and stuff. So if we just remember those lines we've just done, a uh, little, little curve line on the toes. Doing some bit of little detail on the shoulder and the back here, so following the general direction and just curving back offwards of it, like you see I've done on the curve on the uh, back thigh here. So just follow the direction of the leg, you know, work out some little bits where you want some muscles, so a few little curves inside the leg maybe, and kind of build off of that, like make a nice little curve and just follow those curved lines just coming off of that line. The tail you want to be very fluffy, so you want to get quite a lot of fur, uh, fur texture in there, so again, just pick a few little directions and just do those flicks all the way across that. You know, that's pretty much it for all the line work for the body. So now we've got that done, I think we're going to start with the background. Now the background you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go for a chrysanthemum. You know, I really like chrysanthemums and it gives me a good sort of ability to play around with some nice colours to contrast what colour the fox is going to be. So you've got these three circles, you know, a large kind of oval one, circular one, and a little disc in the middle. And I'm going to create these curves coming around it. And I'm going to repeatedly curve these all the way around, pointing towards the centre, like so. Now I've got I've got full damn details details uh, <laughs> I have got full oh I'm getting tongue tied on this one I have got full length tutorials on chrysanthemums yeah there we go and I'm gonna have a few more as well this is a general shape of all the back ones so a nice curve around and curve and loop backwards so yeah you can see the basic sort of dimensions of it the basic shape is now there so I'm gonna start adding the line work and the line work I'm a little bit thinner from the body and I'm gonna curve up and make these little tips on each one of these. So as you get to the end, just create this nice, nice little flick tip. And I've got to create a little uh, faint detail line that's going to curve back off of these, but we add that a little bit later on. So for now, I'm going to add the detail lines around all of these, just like so. Go around the bottom, 
And there's that little detail line just through the center of them. Now remember, you're curving through the center of you know, and where they sort of generally curve, it means you kind of got to curve with the circle shape, you know, not just through the center of each one of those. Now the back ones that I see here, we've quite a few little bumps. So where we had the lines curved back, I had quite a few little semicircle loops curving inwards. And you can see the general direction of how I get the placement underneath. So if you sort of draw through it, you kind of get a sense of where it goes. And those inside line bits basically split into two lines. So just build this up section by section, you know, adding those little detail bits, going as you go. And I'm just slowly erasing the back line as well. So I'm just rubbing up my pencil work as I go along. But yeah, I love having these kind of flowers against this. It just makes for a really, really nice design. So you see here on that lower part of the body now, just adding those last few ones just then. Now you get a nice sense of direction of it. You know, you want to kind of feel like it's traveling across the pages as if it's sort of kind of like stretched out. You know, circles are good, but it's nice when they kind of face somewhere and point in a certain way. So yeah, just completely rub out all your line work now, fill in those little detail lines, and that's pretty much it. That's your, that's your outline done. So now we can start shading. So I'm going to start around the ears. So I'm going to have black going from the back of those lines, fading outwards towards the front. So a little highlight just towards the front. The nose is a little bit black just from the bottom, curving up, leave a little highlight just on top, and don't colour in the uh, nostril. Leave the nostril blank. The legs I'm going to fade down from the top was outwards, so you get a little highlight across the bottom. And then the inside pore details, I'm going to do a little circle inside the circles and a little bit upwards from the toes. Where there's a bend in the wrist here, you leave a little highlight just on those bends. So there we go, you can see the pore details in there now. Remember that the uh, legs only go black up to about halfway up the arm and the legs. You know, you don't do the full length. So we're going to colour each one of these in the same kind of principle. So just curving from the inside part outwards, leave a little highlight just on the outside, curving up from the toes, leaving a little highlight on the top of the toes. And a little bit of black just inside the circles, like that. Now it's got a little bit of black in the mouth just to finish off the inside detail. And this just really gives the sense of the head being a bit more in front, you know, because his head's curving, so his head's in front of his body here. I'm going to really faint a little bit of grey just on the outside bits and just very softly just going around all those little fur textures we've done. And once you've got that, I'm going to help some colour. So I'm going to start off with this really nice, really nice orange colour. Um, it's very soft, so I'm going to use like this as my highlight kind of colour and slowly build out darker and darker shades. And I'm going to keep going over each area I've done. So every time there's a bit of fur, I'm going to put up a little bit of stronger colour each time, just building up and building up and building up until I get the way I like it. Now you can just stop whenever you kind of feel you like it or just keep on going. Like I can see here, I'm going to add a few more just in here. Just building off of that fur texture, fading upwards. And it just really gives a sense of body sort of texture and definition. And you get those little dips in the body, which really kind of make it stand out, which I like. So just going for that nice orange, that nice kind of sort of like reddish kind of brown color coming outwards. Uh, the inside body parts, like the fur texture, I'm just using this really nice bluey kind of gray. You, know, you can use a normal gray if you want, but I like a bluey gray. And I'm going to carry this through the pores as well. So through the legs and the pores. The inside tongue, I'm going to do red. And the inside eye, I'm going to do yellow. So that pretty much finishes it off with the color on the inside. So now we've got that done, we can start focusing on the outside. So I know I want these parts of the chrysanthemum to be red, so I'm going to start off with a really nice pink to begin with, because that's going to be my highlight colour. And I can work my red into the or over the top of that. So just bring that nice pink across the whole thing, except for the inside bits. Leave the inside bits blank, because we're going to do that in a different colour. So once we've got the outside bit done in pink, we can start adding our reds. Now I don't want to go too dark you know, with the actual chrysanthemum. I want the chrysanthemum and the fox to stand out. I might go dark with the background, but I don't want the rest of it to be dark. So basically, at the ends I'm going red, and the lower parts I'm going red, I'm leaving a little highlight just through the center so that pink shows through. You know, that highlight's really going to make it pop. And once we've got that done, I'm going to start going inside the chrysanthemum now. And the inside part's going to do in this really nice mint green blue color, because it's really complements against that orange. You know, it's very important to have your colors that are uh, complementary. And you've got this little dark bit of blue just on the underside parts, just to create little shadows to make it a little bit more 3D feel. So just build it up bit by bit, like so. You know, I'm loving how this is looking. A little bit of yellow just inside the flower now. You know, it's really nice because these eyes yellow, it kind of creates a bit of symmetry between him and the chrysanthemum. And then the background is going to add this nice bit of black and sort of grey kind of fading out. 
mainly from around the edge and just behind the chrysanthemum directly and fading out nicely. And then once I've got it done, I'm just going to add a bold line all the way around the fox now, just to make him really stand out in front. And just to finish it off, nice big circle all around the outside. You know, it's not necessary, but it just kind of finishes it off and gives it a bit of a nice little bit of flair to it. So yeah, I hope that helps. You know, it's a really fun one to do. Anything else you guys want to know how to draw, make sure you let me know. You know, I love seeing what you guys do or what you guys want to know. So just let me know and I'm always happy to draw anything. You know, if there's anything you struggle with, if it's, even if it's just a concept, a certain type of thing like faces, body parts, how to build up structure, let me know and I'll try to get something done for it. But yeah, I hope that's helped people. Check out my videos. I'm the Broken Puppet and I'll see you next time. Peace. So that was how to draw a neo-traditional fox, people. I hope that helped you guys. If you liked it, make sure you click subscribe and make sure you click the little button next to it to get notified when I put more videos. Also, drop a like, drop a comment. It's always much appreciated. You know, the more stuff that this channel gets, the more it gets noticed, the more we can help people. You know, if there's anything else you guys want to see, don't forget, anything you guys struggle with or want to learn to draw, let me know, okay? Just drop a comment and let me know. But for now, people, check my videos. I am the Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.